are you like me? <laughs> Do you have an absurd pile of books and small items next to your bedside just splayed out on the ground right above that disaster do you have a perfectly blank wall with no purpose how about we put a shelf on it <laughs> Today I am going to be building a custom shelf onto this blank wall. So one of the things I've been enjoying about doing projects slowly in a room is I go in with most of the, the core basic vision. Like I want to paint these walls this color and I kind of want to put a bit here or a shelf here. But by doing it slowly, I can kind of see what the room needs, see what I should add in. And I've had this wall blank for like a month now more maybe what month is it maybe closer to two months is that no i forget time and i realize now it's the perfect place for a shelf i always have always 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 have a pile of books next to my bed and either it's on the ground or it's on the night table but it's like the books i'm intrigued about whenever i buy new books I don't want to just go ahead and directly put them. Is this something else other people do? I don't want to put them right on my bookshelves right away. I want to like hang out with them for a while, flip through them, enjoy them, be excited by them. So I want to see them right next to me. So I realized having a little bookshelf right here would be perfect. So um, I went out a couple weeks ago actually and I got, I got a bunch of brackets first of all, which is great. So these black brackets are gonna look awesome. I'm really excited actually. They're gonna go like that on the wall and they're gonna look really pretty. Um, and then I also got a bunch of toggle bolts. So this is an unfortunately necessary step if you're mounting heavy things onto plaster walls. So most of the homes of people that are watching this just because I know that the vast majority of my audience is American. Um, so most of the people watching this, you'll have drywall as your walling material because that's what modern homes use. Old homes had a lot of plaster and you know what? There's pros and cons to both, but my house is plaster just cause it's old. So that's what we're dealing with. And I mean, one of the cons is that it, when you drill into it, it doesn't have the same structural integrity as drywall slash. It's very difficult to find studs because they weren't as standardized and it doesn't matter. Does it matter? Do you want to know? Okay. <laughs> it's called lath and plaster because what will happen is um, the house will have its studs. Oh, I'll do a drawing here. The, uh, a wall will have studs. A stud is just a piece of usually two by four wood that goes in the wall. Okay, you've seen this, you've seen framed houses. And then they would put the lath down, which is a lot of little strips of wood going this way across. And then they would plaster on the wall and then that would dry and then you paint over it. So because of that, um, it isn't, you can't just drill through the lath and plaster and expect it to hold up much weight. It can hold a bit, like a picture frame is usually fine. Depending on, if it's like a small mirror, you'll be fine. But if you're hanging a mirror, like a big mirror or a TV or bookshelves, then you're gonna wanna get toggle bolts. So the way these work, I mean, I'll just show you the back of this package. They go behind the lath and plaster butterfly out, creating a much more stable situation. So, so that's what I'm gonna do now. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I am going to time-lapse myself, measuring the heck out of everything here, adjusting for where I want to put them and doing the actual drilling in and placing down. Also, a lot of the books that go on this shelf are going to be my boyfriend's books because I am building myself these giant, massive, beautiful bookstore, uh, bookshelves downstairs. And I don't wanna mix books. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so he doesn't yet have any place for his books and I don't really know where they'll go yet. So at least a good chunk of them will go here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
all the full shelves yet, but I finished the shelves last night. Um, you can see one of those shots, I had my sweatpants on and then I was like, I don't want to film myself anymore. So I finished them last night and I put up fairy lights in them and hung up a painting that you can see the corner of over there. So I am now going to put some books on this shelf. Like I mentioned, this is mainly for me going to be one shelf where I put the newest books I've bought or the books I'm most excited to read and the rest of the bookshelves are going to be for my boyfriend. So I thought it would be fun to do a little book haul. Um, but like I don't, like I said, I don't want to spoil it. So maybe I'll move the camera over. <laughs> this is cute. <laughs> or just on my bed. Um, okay, so I recently bought a bunch of books. I, I don't know. I just needed some new books, some book therapy, book, book purchasing therapy specifically. Um, okay, so one book I'm so excited that I got is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. So I bought this because me and my dad keep saying it was the best of times, it was the worst of times to each other. And I have never read A Tale of Two Cities. Actually, I've never read a Dickens. It feels like one of the biggest ridiculous gaps in my... How do you get two literature degrees and not have read Dickens? I've read the beginning of a few Dickens books, but I've never actually read a full one. So I thought, what the hell? So I was looking this up and they have these new editions of the Dickens covers that look like this and I was obsessed. Um, I guess keeping with the classics theme, I also picked up The Grapes of Wrath, which I'm actually so excited about because when I went to purchase it, I got this at a thrift store. It cost me a dollar. It's this incredible edition. I love it. I think it's so beautiful. It's got a great font and font size. It honestly doesn't look like it's been read. It's a bit yellowed because of time. When was, when was this published? But it, um, yeah, it, it looks brand new. Like, I don't think anyone ever read this, actually. It, uh, this one came out in 80, 86, so. 86, 96, 2006, 2016. It's been like, what, 35-ish years? <laughs> But as I said, when I was checking out, the woman at the thrift store was like so excited that I was buying this book. She was like, this is an incredible book. She was uh, like in her 70s, but she was like, back when I was a teenager, I read all of his books. And this was by far my favorite and he's such a great writer. And I was like, hell, what a recommendation. And then my boyfriend's best friend was telling me that he had just read this last month and was obsessed with it. So I got all these good recommendations for it and I really hope that I can check it out soon. Uh, okay, then, what did I get? So this book I got, um, because I saw it at this bookshop before, and I had almost bought it, I thought about buying it, I did the thing I often do when I decide not to buy a book, I take a photo of it, does anyone else do that? I like, I'm like, hmm, I don't think I'm gonna buy it this time, so I'll just take a photo of it. It's kind of strange actually, but I took a photo of it, and then I couldn't stop thinking about it, so I decided to pick it up. And it is Concrete Island by G by J. G. Ballard. Um, looking up the Google reviews of this and stuff, it's it's kind of got mixed reviews, and this author seems a little um, controversial. Not in anything politically, just kind of like his writing seems to be pretty strange. Um, but this just sounds like such a crazy story. It's it got big font and. Um, yeah, it's like, it's only 155 pages, so it's really pretty short. But it's a story of a guy who gets into a small accident on, well, it's, I mean, it's a big accident. He flies off the side of a highway, but he does, he's okay. He lands, though, on this kind of island between all these overpasses, and there's no way for him to get out of this island. So he, he becomes trapped in the middle <laughs> of these, these highway uh, passes. And so, but there's all these other people that have gotten trapped there and then he starts to feel like he's got to get off of the island, but then he's like, maybe I don't have to get off the island. Maybe I love this island. Um, so it seems loopy, but just like, just up my alley. Um, okay. This next book is the first one that I got when I walked into the shop. I walked into the shop and I saw this like right in front of me and my, uh, my best friend Raylene, who I also have a book podcast with. So if you ever want to know what I'm reading every week, uh, listen to the podcast. 
But uh, she actually texted me the link to this book um, like a week ago or something. And she was like, Ariel, this sounds like the most you book of all time. And I read it, the synopsis, and I was like, you're totally right. This sounds absolutely incredible. It's No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. Um, and so when I walked into the bookshop, it was staring me in the face and I was like, okay, well, it's a sign. I have to buy it. It's about a young woman who has a large following online who like posts a lot of viral content and she starts to think of her interactions with the people that follow her and the people that watch her stuff as this portal. I, I haven't read it and it does seem a little uh, surrealist, a little magical realist. So the synopsis is a little warped. It seems hard to explain if you haven't read it and I haven't read it because this is just a book haul. But she starts to think of all of the people that are always messaging her and talking to her and following her as the portal and the, they're the ones who speak for her and give her ideas and stuff. So she's doing like a world tour or something to meet the people that follow her and stuff. And, and she started, it seems, to, why it interests me is because it starts to like blur the lines between a person and their following online. and the the weird relationship that that creates and, and everything. So I was so fascinated by it. And then the story says that she gets some texts from her mother that say you have to come home soon. And it kind of like shatters that, that blurred reality of the internet versus real life. So I think this sounds fantastic. If you do listen to the podcast, you will have um, seen like in our in our episode at the beginning of the year, we set out some of our reading resolutions. And one of mine was, if I ever buy a hardcover book, which this is, I have to read it right away. So this is going to be read within the next month or so, um, because I'm sick of buying hardcovers and then not reading them. Why not just wait for it to come out in paperback, save myself the money. So yes, I'm very excited about this. Two more to go. I got this one I'd never heard of before, The Ghost in the House by Sarah O'Leary. Canadian. Fantastic. It's a book about a ghost. I was writing a short story. This sounds so pretentious, but I was writing a short story about a woman who lives in a house and um, she's a ghost, basically. And uh, a, a new couple moves into the house and she sort of like floats around looking at them and, and understanding their relationship. Um, and so I kind of stopped working on that short story. Regardless, I then saw this in the bookshop and it sounded very similar to kind of what I was writing. And I thought it was sounded really interesting and like a better version of what, whatever the hell I was trying to write. And um, yeah, I, I realized I haven't read like a proper ghost story in a long time. So this is from the perspective of, of a woman who dies and, and realizes that she is a ghost. Um, yeah, it sounds cool. The, the synopsis says, what if a ghost were haunting your house? What if you were that ghost? Dun dun dun! And then the last one is this graphic novel, Wage Slaves, which again I hadn't heard of. It's, is it Drawing Quarterly? Who publishes this? Oh, Conundrum International. Never heard of it. It's by Daria Bogdanska and the translation to English is done by Hannah Stromberg. Um, and it just looked beautiful. When I found it in the shop, I was really excited by it. It's about a, um, an artist who moves to Malmo, Malmo? I don't know how you pronounce that actually, to attend art school. And uh, she gets into this kind of bureaucratic nightmare where in order to get a job, she finds out she needs to have like a SIM number. But in order to get a SIM number, she has to have a job. Social insurance, no, a SIN. I didn't mean SIM, not a SIM card, <laughs> a SIN number. So it's like a bureaucratic nightmare while at the same time she's just trying to make a living and go to art school. It sounds so up my alley. Um, so I haven't heard about it. I don't know what the word on the street is about this book, but who cares? I'll just read it and I'll, I'll make up my own words on the street. Um, it looks awesome. I'm very excited about it. So these are my newest books. I am now gonna go put them on the bookshelf. And now a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelance, writing, 
and more. <laughs> because it's centered around learning, you have unlimited access to all of their courses and you never have to watch an ad. So with their annual membership, which is under $10 a month, you get access to so much content. The class I recommend is writing character-driven short stories by Ian Lee. If you're like me and you have a short story you're in the middle of, <laughs> which I just mentioned during my book haul, I'm trying to write a story about a ghost. Um, this is the perfect class. The first 1,000 people to click the link down in my description will get a free trial of premium membership. So please click the link down in the description Thank you so much to Skillshare for supporting my channel. I love working with Skillshare because it's genuinely such a beautiful product. It's just a place for you to learn more. It's awesome. All right, let us now reveal the bookshelves. everyone my uh, bedroom bookshelves are complete I am so happy with them I think that they turned out just beautifully honestly <laughs> not to not to pat myself on the back too much but I I wasn't sure if it was gonna work as well as I'd hoped and it really did and I feel like it's brought the room together really well this area was so blank um, that having some books in here I think just adds that beautiful color and I think that the the contrast of the white wall with the dark brown shelves just looks crisp. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and for supporting my channel and I hope you guys all have a great day. All right, bye!